In this constantly changing world, life and personal values can seem more than a little unstable. Just when you think you have it all figured out, then everything changes. Sometimes life can seem overwhelming. Well, the good news is you can change your life. You have within you the power to learn how to flow with the changes and smooth out the bumps of life. You can experience the joy, peace, health, and abundance you deserve. You were created to be happy and productive. That urge to grow and express yourself was put there for a reason. Learn the spiritual principles that can help you not just to survive, but thrive in this changing world. At Unity, we'd like to help you do just that. Imagine a spiritual path that honors the universal truths in all religions, that sees we are all one. Imagine a movement that respects each person's right to choose their spiritual path. Imagine a spiritual movement that empowers and unites rather than divides. This is Unity. For more than a century, Unity has offered a positive, practical, and progressive approach to understanding and applying the teachings of Jesus and other spiritual masters. Each and every person has inborn, God-given powers. We can change our lives by learning to use these powers consciously and intentionally. The way we use or misuse these powers shapes our reality. Connect with your higher self. Connect with the Divine. As you listen to the sound of my voice, gently close your eyes, placing your hands in a comfortable position, relaxing more and more with each breath. Allow each breath to help you relax deeper and deeper. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. With the next breath, inhale a big breath, expanding your stomach and lungs as much as you can. Now hold it and exhale gently with relief. With your eyes still closed, Begin to settle into your body, allowing the breath to naturally inhale and exhale. Feel yourself sitting still. Feel the connection of your body with the chair or cushion and the movement in your body as it relates to its breathing. As you breathe in, feel the breath going from your forehead to your abdomen, relaxing and releasing any worry, negative thoughts or expressions that you have carried throughout your life that may be blocking your success. As we release these, we allow new thoughts to find a place in your consciousness. With the next breath, notice any thoughts as they arise and try to identify any emotions that go along with them.
as any old unproductive thought reveals itself. Avoid thinking of them as negative. Instead, identify them as sad, unpleasant, untrue. See each thought and acknowledge it as it passes. As you remember the valuable information learned from each experience, say to the thought, thank you for the information, thank you for the experience, and give it permission to leave by replacing it with a positive thought. Inhale and exhale. With the next breath, repeat to yourself, I am a valuable person. I have accomplished many things. I do many things well. I am a great person. I deserve to be happy and healthy. I am smart. I am enough. I release any unforgiveness or judgments. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. With the next inhalation, remind yourself that thoughts come and go and you have a choice in whether or not you believe each one. Now slowly open your eyes and return to this space. You are now ready for your next journey. Namaste.
Welcome, 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 and welcome again to this Beyond Walls spiritual community. I'm Reverend R. Ken, and I want to remind you <clears throat> that next week, July 17th, our 11 a.m. service will come live from the Unitarian Universal Society of Geneva, where I will be the guest speaker. Now, for full details, I encourage you to visit our website. They'll be up there all week. And that's unityocs.org. But as we move into this week, I want to remind you of something else. I want to remind you that there is an infinite source available to everyone. It is there for each who seek it, no matter their race, their gender, or religion. You can believe what you may, but you should know that the source of the universe is also the source of each of us. Therefore, the principle supporting the stars is the principle supporting and available to each of us. As I declare this statement in the first person, I declare it for all. I am open and receptive to this divine living principle. Father, Mother, God, I am grateful. This is my declaration. This is my truth. And as I accept it, so it becomes. And all is well and well indeed. You are not a drop in the ocean. You are the ocean in a drop. Rume. The question of this day, is it our desire to possess a level of understanding which conforms to the thinking patterns we have created? Or are we willing to release the personal ego and allow the Christ consciousness or spiritual ego to guide us. A simple choice. Living from a guided personal ego or living from an inspired divine ego. You see, personal ego is a basic action guiding human survival. But when misguided, we may find the power-seeking aspect of ego, pursuing the path of destruction of one for the betterment of another. Our attitude, which somewhat describes today's political climate, as well as social climate in many places throughout our country. Human rights being reduced while the access to weapons of war being increased. Spiritual ego, while also supporting the personal survival, and sometimes we think that if we give up, give over to spiritual ego, we're going to lose a personal identity, personal power, but that's not true because it also supports personal survival. But it seeks a different path. It seeks a path of win-win in situations. See, it's couched in the premise that we live under the equal and balanced law of an abundant universe. As we are able, though, to move away from the long dependence on, on, on personal ego for survival and instead work to deepen our understanding and execution of spiritual ego, we began to set the stage for a transition into living from a God first consciousness. God first, that's the first step. That's step one. Then executing from the guidance of a God first consciousness is step two. A consciousness, an awareness that there is room for me at the top 
a consciousness and awareness that there is room for me at the top. Because in a God first consciousness, opportunity is abundant. And the level of my success, the level of your success, evolves from being in concert with that awareness. What is that awareness again? There is room for me at the top. Now, within this spiritual ego, there's a landscape. I want you to imagine a landscape that you see rocks and mountains and I want you to see fields and I want you to see the sky and space. See all of these things. And then understand that it is our awareness, that it is our consciousness that determines if the mountains and the rocks are symbols of obstacles that stand in our way, or, or if the sky is the symbol of a, a, a launch point for a limitless life. It, it's up to us to how we see it. As Dr. Wayne Dyer said, as you see it, so it becomes. Personal ego, spiritual ego, both derive their power from the one source. Both come from the same place. That one source. That one power and one presence. And we have been assigned to the inalienable spiritual right to consciously move into synchronicity with the oneness, the omniness of that presence, that power. Let me say, say it to you again. It is an inalienable spiritual right. No one can take it away from you. No thing can remove it from you, from your possession. It is yours no matter what, no matter where you are, no matter how you're living at this moment, you have a spiritual right to move in concert with the flow of an ever-giving, ever-abundant universe. Let's look at the story of the prodigal consciousness that's found in Luke 11. It, this consciousness, it understood and executed that always present right to return to a consciousness of oneness with the Father. No matter what. The essence of the story, the essence of it. Always able to go back to the Father, the source, the oneness. This inalienable inalienable, inalienable spiritual right resides within you, within me, within us all. It accepts our effort to consciously synchronize with its presence, with its power. It accepts, just as the Father accepted the prodigal consciousness coming back to it, it accepts, it doesn't judge, it doesn't say, you're not worthy, you haven't done the things to make you worthy. It accepts because you want to come home, because you want, because you want to move in the flow with it. It opens its arms and says, come on in. Not only are you welcome, you are warmly welcome. The ring and the robe and the feast, you are warmly welcome. Know that this universal energy that we call life, it's like an ocean. It will move us along. We will move along in life, conscious or not, synchronized or not. It doesn't wait for us to get ready. It keeps moving us along. Some of us know that we look back. We say, how did you become this age? How did you get this old talking to a child? 
saying that we don't realize that the years have passed, that we have been moving along and flowing on this life, this ocean, this wave of life. It didn't matter if we were aware of it or not. But know this, know this, this importance, this importance, this importance that we, that you, that I have a spiritual right to consciously live, move in this positive flow of life in a positive way. Did you hear me? You have a right to move on the waves of this ocean of life in a positive way. <laughs> it's not a privilege that's given to a few. It's not a matter of whether you believe or you don't believe. Living in the synchronicity of the universal flow is the dynamic web of all life. The dynamic web of all life. You know, it catches you up and pulls you in. Are you willing to go to the center? Are you willing to go to the fullness of this flow? See, for us humans, becoming aware or becoming conscious of this web, of this flow, of this movement is our right. We have a right to become aware. So what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean, Rev? What that means is it doesn't matter how long you've been in denial and darkness and misunderstanding and not knowing. It doesn't matter. As long as you have presence, you have possibility. How do we do it? How do we do it? How do we exercise our right? One method is to work to develop understanding of the universal nature of this inalienable right to live the life we choose. It's everywhere, universal, everywhere. Everyone has it. See, if you recognize it, then you stop worrying about Tommy and Susie and Joe, what they're doing, and you get busy about your own life because you know that they have the same opportunity and you do too. What does that mean? They have the opportunity to be as great as they want to be, as great as they can be, as great as they can believe, as great as they can vision, but so do you. And when we understand that more, and when we accept it more, and when we work with it more, we begin to work more with ourselves so that we can achieve all that we envision for ourselves. And once we understand that, then we have to allow, we have to allow the wisdom that we gain from this understanding to flow in our lives and to move us along. See, as we, as we flow with that found wisdom, that becomes our opportunity to be better, to live better. So what, what, what's happening right there? We gain the understanding that it's for everyone. Whatever has held us back, be it religion, be it parents, be it environment, be it the past, whatever it is, when we release that and say, it's my right. I can have more. I can have good right now. It's okay for me to want it and it's okay for me to have it. Then we, we, we gain a, a, a level of wisdom comes with that. And that wisdom guides us to achieve that living better to be better. Being better to live better. Yes. Scriptures from all over the place, from all various practice, share foundational methods and practice to evolve from the personal ego to the spiritual ego. You say, well, what's the difference in this ego? One ego, two egos. We talked about the difference, but let me give you a little quick one that, that folks like to say. Ego is edging God out. E-G-O. Edging God out. They like to say that. And I say that the spiritual ego is the evite God on board in your life. That spiritual consciousness, that spiritual ego, or that Christ consciousness allows us to participate in methods and practices that lead to a choice to become 
all that we say we want to be. I, I have to say we say we want to be. So many times we say things, we don't really want them. So we start with, I say I want to be. And when I say I want to be, I become in a position, I move into a position where my focus is in front of me and I can see the choice. I can see the choice. I'm focused, but I see the choice. I, I, it doesn't look like the old road. It looks like there's a fork in the road. And, and, and one fork says, if, if you go this way, and I'm, I'm focusing, I'm trying to see. You see, I've got this understanding, and I've got this spiritual ego coming up, and I'm, my vision is getting clear, and I see one side says, the road to the kingdom of God. I said, oh, that sounds pretty good. I've heard that before. And the other road says, the kingdom of substance and manna and riches. And I said, whoa. Hold on. <laughs> Which one do I really want? Do I want that personal ego that takes me to all of those material things? Or do I want that spiritual ego that is abundant, meaning that it has all those things and more? A Lao Tzu saying puts it like this. Perfect wisdom comes spontaneously to those who seek it. So as you're looking at that fork, you say, uh, I need some clear spiritual understanding on which way to go. Boom, it said instantly, spontaneously. You say, ah, I understand. This has everything, including what this is offering. But our challenge, the human challenge, is to work toward full demonstration from where we are right now. Oh, boy. You knew he was going to go there, right? Whatever our level of consciousness is right now, full expression of that. Whoop. Can I give you an example? Thank you very much. So I want to be, whatever it is, I want to be, but I won't be until I become. That's not living from the level of understanding that you have. See, the understanding that you have is that you want to be. That's enough. You're throwing some human ego on the rest of it. Once I become being bold, then I can be by. The idea, the, the desire to be is enough to then develop your spiritual ego based on what you want to be and allow it to lead you into what you need to do to be what you want to be. And don't put yourself in the driver's seat to say, this is what I have to do to be. You understand? So whatever level we are at this moment, except this is where I am right now, this is where I want to go, ha, let me work to become closer to the reality of the abundance of the universe so I can get there. Hmm? This is how we can expand that current level of understanding to a higher level of understanding and going toward the expression of life that we desire. We start where we are. That's a simple way to put it. We start where we are. Wherever you are, start going to where you want to be. You've heard it. A journey begins with the first step. It didn't say a short journey, long journey, medium journey. Any journey begins with the first step. Take the step toward where you want to go. Don't talk about you want to go to California and start out toward New York saying I got to get there first because I know some folks and they can give me some money so I can get to California. Turn around, go to California, start your steps to California. Trust. In the text, lesson, the Lessons in Truth, we're warned that not only must we use this birthright, this inalienable right, but direct it. I want to go to California. Now, maybe I could go, but if you let me go to New York, then I, I want to go to California. And then trust, rest. But, but as we have our wants and our desires, make sure that those wants and desires include the service to more than just one, more than just our own gratification. See, no matter what level of spiritual understanding we are currently at, 
we have a God-given right and responsibility to live from it. Which means we, we have to learn to let go, let happen, and allow spiritual understanding to lead us forward. What? It doesn't matter where we, I don't have much understanding. I have great understanding. I work with understanding. And wherever we are, the same process. If we're going to live from that understanding, if we're going to allow that understanding to demonstrate in our lives, we have to get out the way. We have to let go and move in flow with it. Let it take us forward. It takes trust to do that. You see, so no matter if you're on this level of understanding or you think you are, you're on this level of understanding or you think you are, you have to trust what you understand so you can get more understanding. See, the question really becomes, is there a real desire to break out of a level of to the thinking patterns that we have created. Think about that. I have created a thinking pattern to say I can or I can't. And it, it, it's a matter of do I choose to understand that I can move out of it, I can break out of it, that the universe is abundant and it doesn't hold me back. Do I understand that? And it doesn't matter about the patterns that I've created. There are more patterns to be created if I so trust enough to allow myself to be caught in that spiritual web and moved toward the center. And moved toward the center. Will I allow the Christ consciousness or the spiritual ego to guide me out of the darkness of limitation and negation? That's the question I have to ask myself. That's the question you have to ask yourself. Do you trust enough to allow spiritual consciousness, spiritual ego to guide you out of limitations, out of negati uh, negativity in your thinking and your actions? Do, do we wish to move beyond our intellectual understanding into the realm of divine revelation. What does that mean? Well, I think I know. Well, I know if I go this way, I'm going to New York. I know I have some people in Cleveland I can hit on so I can get to California. That's my intellectual understanding. But I need, I need to move beyond that because I really want to go to California. I've got something really good going. I've got some things I want to do, some people I want to help. And in order to do that, I have to move beyond what I think I know. I may end up going the same way that I thought I was going, but maybe with a different result. Maybe I won't even get to Cleveland. I'll just get to Gary and I see that, oh, look, at, here's a trip to California. I don't know. I'm waiting to be, for it to be revealed to me, but it can't be revealed to me until I move out of my level of understanding in consciousness. In other words, I can't be stuck here. Yeah, this is the level of understanding I'm at right now, but I'm willing to allow it to expand in my life. I'm willing to let the web take me to the center of the Christ consciousness to move me forward beyond what I can even think. I want to let you know, it's not tomorrow. It, it, it's not the next holiday. It's not the weekend. This is the season. Right now. This is the time to develop a Christ consciousness of God first. Yeah. Right now. See that God first consciousness is in consciousness and accepts and it chooses to act from an awareness of an ever-present, an ever-power, always present, and always divine, always ready to lead us the right way. But if I don't accept it, I'm struggling against that which is good for me. And if I continue to wait till something else happens before I begin to open myself to my inalienable right to develop a spiritual ego, it is me holding me back, not God, not my neighbor, not my pastor, not my therapist, not, not my friends or my family. It's me. It's me. And the next time you think of yourself less than you should, 
Remember Luke 11. Think about the prodigal consciousness that had gone through all the mess but decided it's time to return to a, my father's house or a consciousness, a higher consciousness. It's time to do this and I shall do it. I'm not worried about whether they're going to accept me or not. I'm not, worried. I'm not worried about any of that. The only thing I need to do is decide to return and start moving toward it. Let's take that idea into our inner chamber. Father, Mother, God, I know that I have been many places that I didn't need to be. I know I've had many thoughts that I didn't need to have. I know there have been actions in my life that I generated that didn't need to happen. But with all of that, I know that you have never, ever turned your back on me. That you have never, ever closed the door on me. So right here, right now, <laughs> I'm accepting that the door is open, that the oneness exists, that I'm already in it. <laughs> and I accept being in it. I won't wait till tomorrow. I won't wait till next week. Right now, right here, right now, I declare that the life, that the joy, that the peace, that the success that I want is already in place waiting for me to come and claim it. It is my inalienable spiritual right to live, to be better so I can live better. I thank you. I thank you, Father, Mother, God. I say to you, peace, peace, and blessings. And with that, know that as you see it, so it becomes. Thank you for being with us today. I'm Reverend R. Ken. This is Unity of Chicago South, Beyond Wall Spiritual Community. And we say to you, Namaste.